What's up guys, thanks for joining me again. This is part three of the LT250R build. Um, I've done quite a bit in the last three weeks since the last upload, uh, but a lot of it was kind of boring, uninteresting things. Um, I did a quick rebuild on the carburetor, started sorting out some wiring, painted a few bits that needed to get addressed before going on the bike, and then uh, polished a few more bolts, but I'll flip the camera around and we'll uh, check out what I've done so far and start making a game plan on what's next to come. So in part two, we put the motor in. The motor has gone back in after 10 years and pretty much where I left off there, as you can see, there's a lot more parts on here, but it really is more than what it looks like. What I did was I painted the uh, steering stem, uh, painted the handlebar holders, black, just a fresh coat of steel it, put it back in, and then I got curious. I've had this radiator sitting around forever. I mean, literally since 2019, it's been sitting here. A lot of guys don't get lucky with them lining up. So these two lined up no problem. This lined up no problem. I felt very lucky. I mean, I should buy some lotto tickets because a lot of these eBay radiators are just garbage on fitment. From there, I kind of got curious and I started throwing on some wiring and started running it and following the pictures that I took before disassembly. But some of the wires were ran oddly to begin with when I got the bike and I'm going to change it. The ignition key cylinder usually gets bolted up over here on top and it's been moved down so there's some slack in the wiring so i kind of uh, wrapped it around a little bit right here from there i was looking at the wiring closely and there was electrical tape everywhere so i went ahead and i heat shrunk as much as i could uh, but i still left the plastic covering on most of the parts that you can see that's factory so all this stuff will be hidden uh, by the plastics and you won't really see it much but this is going to be looking just like factory I just put a little bit of heat shrink where the electrical tape was. So this is the factory as well. You know, once I started going in deeper like that, it was really just like an afternoon where I kind of got a lot of this stuff mounted up and uh, I cleaned every bit along the way. So I cleaned the box, cleaned the ignition, cleaned all the wiring as much as I could. And I just wanted a really good base. So here is one of the main chassis harnesses and I heat shrunk all this right here trunk all this right here let's see if we could get it in the light i went through and i cleaned all of these terminals so all the grounds are going to be nice and grounded just like they should be i grounded or i took off all the powder coat behind it so it can ground like it should as i said before i rebuilt the carburetor so this has a brand new new old stock gasket and a uh a float bowl gasket as well so these two gaskets are brand new everything else was just disassembled and cleaned the idle jet was cl completely clogged and it kind of makes sense because whoever was running it before me had this uh idle adjust screw jammed in all the way so they were compensating for that j uh, clogged jet i looked at the numbers on the jets and they are stock so i'm not anticipating any changes one thing if you haven't noticed already is this very trick air box this is made by cfm i ordered it on ebay it came literally within a week which is amazing and it's got a, a four inch diameter uh, pipe inside which accepts this uni filter and they base that off of a honda so that is a uh, way better than factory right there and I feel like it goes with the theme of the build, uh, you know, a little bit of silver, you know, polished aluminum, blue, and it just flows beautifully. So that looks great. I ordered a new petcock for the gas tank, and that is going to be this part right here. It's from a Yamaha, but a lot of guys on the forums swear by them for two reasons. One, uh, it is a lot bigger 
in diameter on the pipe so it flows more. And two, the orientation goes straight down rather than sideways. So, you know, cheap upgrade, not bad. I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks. So we're gonna slap that on. The only reason I haven't put that on yet is because when I took the pet cock off the gas tank, I did see sand in there. Uh, the old gas tank lid had a broken nipple on it, so there wasn't that stud sticking out uh, with the vent cap. It was just open. So that is going to get flushed before I put the pet cock in. And obviously I can't put the gas tank on until I get all the wiring sorted. So in this video, we're gonna get the wiring harness on the bike, zip tied down, um, fastened with these factory things. I kept them all, cleaned them as best I could. Um, if I have to add a, a few zip ties, I will. Uh, but before I recorded this video, I mocked up all the wires because it was kind of hard to figure out where everything goes. And I put little wire numbers on here. So this is going to have one, two, three, four, five, and it will match up to, uh, should be some of these. See, we got four right here and then six and one right here. So that should make the process way easier. And um, I, I just want to make sure I route it nice, tuck it away, and get it out the way, and be one and done with wiring. Not a big fan of wiring, but it's something you have to know if you're going to be working on machines. Whether it's quads, cars, trucks, um, you've got to understand the basics of it. And uh, it's just a key uh, trait to have and carry lifelong for sure. So anyways, aside from that rant... Let's uh, get working on the wiring. a nightmare but uh, i needed to take a quick break and look at pictures so i can see where the ties were originally i put them pretty much where most of them were at but not exact on every one uh, basically you've got this tail light wire coming out here it currently uh, does not have tail light or headlight the headlight plug is right here i'll probably be putting something on maybe an led i don't think i'll go halogen again but i wanted the wiring there anyways so i ran it all the way through here this is where I met the CDI box, the rectifier, ignition, um, hand controls, and the ignition coil, and then the main engine harness from the motor. This one, when I first took it off, it was zip tied around this circle. I didn't like that, so I got this little rubber clamp, drilled out the hole to go on the motor mount and bolt. So now it's fully supported, and I don't have to worry about that right here. There's kind of a bunch of wiring, all those little small ones, uh, but you won't see it. The gas tank's going to cover it all. I'm just kind of one for details. So I try to route everything as much as I could. I missed it uh, while I wasn't filming looking back at the pictures, but uh, you could pretty much see what I did here. So I got everything all bunched up here. So these two are holding all the wires back here. There was a lot of slack from this wire and a lot of slack from the yellow and red, but that's mainly because of the relocation of a couple of components. And then lastly, I put this third one right in the middle. It does hold some of those wires, but the main thing is to hold this uh, coil wire. So if I do need to take it off or move it, I could pop this one off and I don't have to worry about getting all those other wires loose again, but we got a ground here, got a ground right there, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be it for the grounds. That's done in my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. If it doesn't start when we kickstart, then I'm going to go and start figuring out where I messed up. But I am 99.9% .9 sure that I did it all correct this time around. It's really easy because they're all color coded. But still, you know, with wiring, I always second guess myself. So either way, 
Uh, one thing I forgot to mention was I did get the power valve installed. Last time it wasn't, this cover wasn't even on. So I went and put it in, latched that little white clip onto the power valve, put a new old stock gasket, torqued the polished bolts to spec. And when you put in this deal, you have to put the spring in, spin it 360, lock it down. I put a little bit of grease on that O-ring and cinch down the bolts. I did look back on my pictures and it was in that exact position. So I'm confident that we're good with that. Pretty much from here, I need to start, let's see, start doing control arms. Uh, those are gonna be next on my to-do list. I'll flush that gas tank out and get that pet cock in there, put the gas tank on. Then I can start putting on some of the uh, mounting points for the plastics. Uh, the air box is only uh, hand threaded in because the shock isn't in there. And in order to put the shock in, I've got to take the air box out. So that will not be cinched down until I either rebuild the rear shock, which is the plan, or replace it. But um, I really do think I'm going to replace the front shocks. Uh, the OEM shocks are super old and there's no rebuilding them so that's kind of why i'm leaning towards that a lot of the guys in the forum say the rear shocks are perfectly fine to rebuild they function well as long as they're filled with oil and charged properly and uh, last but not least i have all of the bearings for the carrier but i'm still debating on whether we're going to change this axle or not but there is one more huge surprise and i'm hoping that it's in the part four of this build so I can't tell you what it is yet, but it is going to tie this entire thing together and look amazing. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. I know it was a short one this time around, but we did get the wiring done, which is huge. Uh, we've got part of the cooling system on and the carburetor is fully rebuilt. So we're making progress. I'm going to be focusing on this more, but if you're watching the page, I am drowning myself in projects. I still have the Accord on my mind. I've got the FJ40 and of course the LT250, uh, my wife's LTZ250, which I have plastics for and a bunch of maintenance parts. But either way, I'm working as hard as I can to keep content flowing on this page. And I hope you guys appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with me and I will upload more as soon as I can.